When we're dealing with mass moments of inertia, there's one special case that I particularly want to bring up, and that's thin plates. So if you're dealing with any object like this, where the thickness of your object is significantly smaller than the other two dimensions, we can find the mass moments of inertia using this formula, where rho is the density of my object, T is the thickness of the plate, and IA is the area moment of inertia, just like we've been doing. So this is a regular one where, for example, IY would be the integral of x squared dA. If you plug that in here for my rectangular plate, what that looks like is the area moment of inertia would be 112 bh cubed. So my mass moment of inertia would be rho t times 112 bh cubed. And if you remember, for any rectangular prism like this, the total mass of that would be rho times the volume. So you've got rho times bht, which means that the mass moment of inertia about the x-axis for this thin rectangular plate is 112 mh squared, which is actually what you would find if you looked that up in a table. So looking from that, there are some thin plate relationships that we can use. If the mass moment of inertia about the x-axis is rho t times the area moment of inertia about the x-axis, so I've got rho t times the integral of y squared dA, and similarly, I am about the y-axis would be rho t i area about the y-axis, or rho t times the integral of x squared dA. The mass moment of inertia about that third axis, about the z-axis, is rho t times the polar moment, of air, polar moment of the area in the xy. So this is j, that's what we had before. J is the integral of r squared dA, so it's the distance away from this z-axis that this particular differential mass sits. Well, just like we did this when we were dealing with polar moments of the area, what I have here is rho t times x squared plus y squared by the Pythagorean theorem of that little triangle up in there. Well, at this point, if you go right back through here, what you can say is, since this is the integral of y squared and the integral of x squared, that the mass moment of inertia for a thin plate about that third axis, the z-axis, is the sum of the mass moments of inertia of the x and y axes. And we're going to use that relationship to find the mass moment of inertia for this extruded rectangle. You can also do this for any body of revolution, when I actually want to figure out how, what the mass moment of inertia of the whole thing would be. So if I looked at this differential mass, so I've got a dm, which would be the density, times b, which is this distance, and h, and then my thickness is dx. Well, remember that I can find the integral of im by integrating the dim. So my dim about this x-axis, which is the one out the length of this, would be dim about the y-axis plus dim about the z-axis. So using this fact and the thin plate formula again, I have that these, each of these differential ims about the y and z-axis would be rho t times the area, 112 bh cubed and 112 b cubed h. So here are my area moments of inertia times rho times the thickness, rho dx. And if I plug these, into that formula, what you end up with is 112 times the total mass of your object, b squared plus h squared. And that is what you would get if you looked it up in a table.